and well, New South Wales are about to face them all because Nathan Cleary's likely omission from State of Origin 2 sets the scene, you think, for a week of soul-searching, of debate, and possibly the biggest week of Brad Fittler's coaching career because his chief playmaker, his number seven most likely out in a must-win game to keep the series alive at Suncorp Stadium. Who comes in? Does the test come any bigger than this for Freddie and his Blues? Well, let's pose this one to you first up. Good morning to you, Matty Johns here. Thanks to Latrobe Financial looking after you. It's a huge, huge test ahead. Yeah, morning, Matty. It is a huge uh, test. And yesterday, we were sitting in the green room at Fox Sports, and I was sitting alongside Greg Alexander, and there was a gasp when, uh, when Nathan grabbed his left hamstring. Uh, but it just offers someone an opportunity, Matty. But, I mean, look, it, you know, first things first, yeah, on the Nathan situation, it was, yeah, he, he's one of those guys, Nathan, that he just really, he, you know, he doesn't get a lot of injuries. And, and to see that, it was sort of, oh, man, everyone's going, is this really happening? It's just been, it's been an origin series. An origin series always carries a lot of storylines and a lot of headlines, but... This game one, I mean, the fallout out of game one, I, I, I can't remember an origin game that has created so many headlines, so much controversy, so much debate, particularly down here in New South Wales. So we're about to do it, you know, for the next hour or so and perhaps even longer. And it's going to continue all day because uh, Nathan Cleary will have scans, we understand, this morning. And judging by what we saw yesterday, more than likely going to be out. But how does... How does Fittler and co, how does Brad Fittler and Greg Alexander and all that put away all the noise that's about to come their way? Because as you rightly mentioned, off the back of Origin 1, there were critics left, right and centre. So there was a whole stack of noise and now it's going to be even bigger. You've got to pick this bloke. You've got to do this. You've got to change that. How, how does it affect the team internally? Matty, the first thing is you just can't, you can't be afraid to get beat. That, that's that's primary in your mind. Is that you just got to eliminate that, right? And it's like anything in life. Like, you know, the thing that sort of—I don't want to sound like I'm doing born free here—but the thing that does set your mind free is if you are comfortable. If you can get it in your mind, the worst case scenario: Am I going to be okay going forward? Is the sun going to come up tomorrow? Yes, it will. I'll be okay. And from there, you just got to go for it. You just can't be chewed up by the anxiety and the concern of getting beat. Is This is an opportunity for New South Wales, for Freddie and Brandy and, and so on, to get on the front foot, get really positive. In a lot of ways, Matty, they can, they're going to go into camp with a real siege mentality. Okay, we're on a mission. You know, we've got this that's happened to us. We've had this. We've got our critics. We're going to show them. We're going to, we're going to, you select a side, you bunker down, and you just you head up to Queensland and you get on the front foot and you play aggressive football. Matty, it's just come in. Nathan Cleary scans are in. He has been ruled out for six weeks. It's been made official from Penrith in just the last couple of minutes. So Nathan Cleary ruled out for six weeks. That's a hammer blow. That's a big blow. And look, Matty, uh, hamstring, bad hamstring tears, and I've, I've had them before. You might be out for six weeks, but it takes you another month at least after that to really get the confidence to squeeze the trigger and, and run at full speed. We see, look, we've seen it with Tommy, with Tommy Travojevic, and Tommy's still trying to find that confidence. That's a, to be out six weeks, that's a pretty, that's, that's a grade two tear. Well, you just mentioned Tom Trebojevic. I mean, there's still obviously the concussion issue around him. We've had Cameron Murray go around, go down as well with groin injury. Jai Arrow on the other side has gone with a ankle injury and faces up to six weeks. So we'll start to get the news of those um, players as well. So in terms of New South Wales, Cleary gone for six, Murray in doubt, Trebojevic still in doubt as well. Where, where does this put them for, for origin too? Well, Matty, you know, crucially, we've got a lot of depth and options in those positions. We've just, you know, if something happens with Tom, and he's not right to go, then you've got the option you can switch. Uh, you can switch Stephen Crichton over the right, right side because we're expected to get Latrell back on the left. You could bring in Campbell Graham. Okay, so we're going to be okay in that position. As far as the forwards are concerned, as far as Care Murray's out, man, that is a, that's a really big blow. But an, office, an opportunity, maybe Daniel Saifidi has always aimed up at origin level to get it out of Newcastle. Uh, and as far as the halves concerned, which is going to be the big debate, is what we do is what does this mean, say, for instance, Jerome Luai? 
okay, does this put his spot under danger? Because jo Jerome was really good in, in game one. I, I thought he's one of our better players. He's probably our best playmaker. However, does he retain his, does he retain that position? Is there a better option, particularly with Latrell coming back into the side, Matty? The relationship between Cody Walker and Latrell Mitchell on that side is such a special one. So, okay, if we're bringing Latrell coming to the side, that means Cody's in. What does that mean? Does that mean, you know, uh, does that mean Damian Cook all of a sudden starts to come into the picture? Uh, on the other side of the, on the other side of the field, of course, is there's a real case for Adam Reynolds. Okay. Um, Suncorp Stadium, great form, you know, Suncorp Stadium being his home ground, great form, he's so accomplished kicking game, but I just think, Matty, it's Nico's time. He's been in that New South Wales system waiting for his opportunity, here it is. And I thought against the Broncos the other night, playing against the Broncos, he was playing in a pack and that was that was beaten, they lost the yardage game, but he was brilliant, he couldn't have done any more. So my thing is this, Matty, is that Cody Walker has to come into the 17. That's what I think. I, he's he's just a multi-dimensional weapon. So he comes into the 17. Now, if you're going to retain Jerome on, on the left-hand side, then Cody's your 14. However, if Cody, if you go, no, no, we're going to go all in on Cody here. We're going to form the combination between he and Latrell because he's the guy that really gets Latrell going. Then Damien Cook's my 14. You were big on Cody Walker in ahead of game one, weren't you, in that 14 position. So yeah. so you, you, you absolutely want him in the squad somewhere, but then it will come down again to those combinations. So Nico Hines in for you at number seven, um, yeah. it, depending on what they do with Jerome Luai and, of course, with Latrell coming back in. You mentioned Adam Reynolds, two games for New South Wales in 2016, and a smoky on the outside of that would be Mitchell yeah. Moses, who played in 2021. Can you see any room for those, or do they double down on Nico Hines? I mean, that the... the the unfortunate part of Nico Hines in game one was when he came on, he he wasn't effective yeah, at all, Matty. was he? I mean, but well, that can't Matty, be a black mark against his name. No, no, it can't. Yeah, you know, thrown on at right centre uh, in the circumstances, you know. It, it, look, I, I for me, Nico's not a 14 because you can't throw Nico on at nine. And that's the thing, just because Zappi Corusau can play 80 doesn't mean you allow him to play 80 minutes because your hooker, you want, you want your hooker to have some zip. You know, he's one of your main focal points in your attack. And so, yeah, Nico, for Nico, he's either, in my opinion, he's either your halfback or he's not in the squad. But once again, I come back, he, he's, he, he's, he's my seven. Um, he's playmaking his improved dramatically. His ability to handle pressure is first class. He's done that in the last 18 months at Cronulla very, very well. But it's his athleticism that gets gives him a real advantage over uh, over Adam. And I thought in game one, Matty, I thought we're too pass centric. Right over Nico's Nico's run first mentality to really simplify things and straighten us up. Combinations are going to be critical. If you've just joined us in the last couple of minutes or so, well, Nathan Cleary has officially been ruled out of State of Origin 1. Matty, probably two as well, because six yep. weeks' time, I was just trying to do the math then, I mean, six weeks' time takes you right up to the eve of Origin 3. But, but I mean, it Isn't doesn't it really matter yeah. because Origin 2 is the one that keeps the whole series alive. Yeah, it does. Wouldn't it be, I mean, there's so 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 much going on, so many questions. i tell you, Matty, on, on it, on a slightly different note, if we get ahead of ourselves, I mean, imagine if you pick Nico Hines, right? So for game two, and Nico Hines, you know, is plays plays great, and we win. And then all of a sudden, Nathan Cleary is hundred percent fit to go. Say in a month's time, says I'm ready to go. Wouldn't that that that, that would create a conundrum for the, for the what? for Brandy and Freddie? Do you know what? I couldn't think of a conundrum to give you this morning, but I think you've just created one that Brandy and Freddie don't need, but that's probably one that they would like to have if they, they can make like. it to a game three. Exactly. Let's go to the open line. John from Harrington Park on 1300-01-1170. Good morning, John. Good morning, boys. How are you going? Um, boys, I, I really think it's a no-brainer that you've got to go with Adam Reynolds. And I'll tell you why, because he basically thinks, well... Everyone thinks his origin career is over. He will handle the pressure the best out of all of them. I just worry that if you're sending Nico or even Mitch Moses and we get beat, it just hurts their origin career. If we happen to lose, well, Renault, Renault probably, that, that's a bonus the next game. He will handle the pressure the best. 
Yeah, John, there's a, there's a serious case for Adam Reynolds, and you're right, he's so composed, those last tackle options. The other night, uh, I thought his last tackle options for the Broncos and, and the week before against the Warriors, too, was first class. Look, John, when you're talking about, you know, don't pick Nico Hines because if he loses, his career could be over. There's a case for saying it would be over if he doesn't get the seven spot. I mean, this is what he has been groomed for in the last couple of seasons, is to take this take this jersey. This is his time. If, if they don't pick him now, I don't know where he sits. Good on you, John. Thank you. Phil from the Gold Coast has a question over Nico Hines. I mean, State of Origin is built... Maddie, as you well know, on big, big moments. Phil? Hey, guys. How are you going? Good, thanks. Hey, good, Phil. That, that's good. Hey, John, do you just a quick question? You said Nico's you know, handed all the big moments. I, I have to disagree with you. Sharks are like zero and five against top eight teams, and then they bombed out in the finals in straight sets last year to me. And I, I don't know much as you do, obviously, but that says to me that he, he can't handle the big moments. Nah, well, look, Bombing out how they played the back end of last year and, and even the other night, you know, some of the games they've lost against the top top sides, I don't place that on Nico's shoulders. I think symbolic uh, of my argument there was the Broncos game. Um, he was he honestly couldn't have done much more. In my opinion, he was close to the best player on the, on the field. And I think there are other circumstances uh, around Nico Hines not winning uh, or not owning the big moments. And, I mean, you look at him last year, he's a Dalian medalist. That, that, tells, that tells me that he does own the big moments.